The local evening news is brought to you by Nagico, local agents, Bryson's Insurance. Good evening. Thank you so much for joining us for, uh, for the evening news here on ABS, the biggest, most trusted name in news. My name is Garfield Burford. A warm welcome. And I'm Terry Andrew. Good evening. There has been an increase in the number of men seeking help as victims of gender-based violence. That's right, Terry. That's our lead story this evening. The report comes from the Directorate of Gender Affairs, as we hear in this report from Ursula Charles Jr. More men across this country have been seeking reprieve from gender-based violence and domestic abuse. The revelation has come from Acting Director of the Directorate of Gender Affairs, Jamie Saunders. Between 2020 and 2021, we saw an increase in reporting for men, whereas it went from 6% to 14%. And that was kind of the start for us to do some more interventions geared towards men. The number of reports has dwindled since 2019 overall, but in each of the years, most of the reports continue to come from women. In 2019, we had 173 reports of gender-based violence. In 2020, which was the year we had the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic, we actually saw a decrease where we had 128 reported. And in both of those years, it was around 90 to 93% of women predominantly making up the reports. And last year, 2021, it was another decrease where we had 123. Saunders is making the appeal for anyone who's a victim to contact the support and referral center. You can call our national hotline, which is 24 hours, and the number for that is 463-5555. You can also walk in directly to the office between 8 to 4.30, or you can call 911, the police, and at any time we would mobilize and have the ability to utilize the center to ensure that the one-stop approach is still being used. Saunders appeared as a guest on Wednesday's edition of Antigua Barbuda Today. For EBS News, I am Ursula Charles Jr. Meanwhile, the directorate is also giving attention to the thorny issue of marital rape. Acting Director Jamie Saunders tells ABS legislative changes may be needed. There may be value in taking a look at the legislation, maybe doing some public consultations and seeing, you know, if it is required for us to make this reform. But I do think that it is something definitely worth looking at. He points to amendments made in other Caribbean jurisdictions, but also assures the support and referral centre will treat with dignity and respect any victim of marital rape. Grenada, there was a Privy Council ruling that looked towards beginning to recognize um, the potential for men to be raped, which I think is a, a, a good advancement. And we're also seeing the Bahamas look at reform um, and legislative amendments in terms of marital rape. I think for us, it is definitely something we're looking at. I can say that if an individual comes to the center to report an instance of marital rape, you know, they will definitely not be turned away. We will aggressively pursue the case just like any other that comes in. In another story here for us, police have confirmed that a prominent member of the Rastafari community in Creekside was among men arrested following the seizure of a rifle and dozens of rounds of ammunition on Tuesday. Law enforcers, law enforcers reportedly executed a search warrant on a property in the area and say a Ruger rifle with 10 matching rounds of ammunition as well as 49 rounds of .45 ammunition were seized. More information is expected to be unveiled shortly as investigations continue. Also here for us, there is a development in the case involving Harry Josiah, former general manager and CEO of the Antiguan Barbuda Transport Board. High Court Judge Stanley John has admitted to an error when a no-case submission was upheld regarding three of the counts against the accused. In his written judgment seen by ABS, the judge said, in light of the evidence relating to counts one, two, and three, and upon further analysis of the same, the count is now of the view that it fell into error in upholding the NPO case submission in respect of counts one, two, and three. The case against Josiah and Genevieve Phillip related to several counts of corruption and forgery in contravention of the Prevention of Corruption Act of 2004 and the Forgery Act. The charges had arisen in relation to six of 12 vehicles loaned to the United Progressive Party for its election campaign. The Crown had argued six of the vehicles were sold and or transferred to the board and then transferred to the accused in the case. 
counsel for the accused, Dane Hamilton, the Queen's counsel, had filed no case submissions, when, which were upheld. But the admission of error on three of the counts is a new development being welcomed by prosecutors. Well, of course, follow that story closely, Terry, and keep our audiences apprised. Meanwhile, this developing story as well, the World Health Organization has released its third and possibly final strategic plan for COVID-19. While it lays out the three possible scenarios for how the pandemic could evolve this year, with one of them being the possibility of the emergence of possibly a more virulent variant. With that developing story, here is Rakim Aparicio. The most likely scenario is that the virus continues to evolve, but the severity of disease it causes reduces over time as immunity increases due to vaccination and infection. In the worst case scenario, a more virulent and highly transmissible variant emerges against this new threat, people's protection against severe disease and deaths either from prior vaccination or infection will wane rapidly. Director General of the World Health Organization, Dr. Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus, outlined some of the potential routes the pandemic is likely to take in 2022. Moving out of the acute phase of the pandemic, he explains, requires the support of countries around the world. We have all the tools we need to bring this pandemic under control. We can prevent transmission with masks, distancing, hand hygiene, and ventilation. And we can save lives by ensuring everyone has access to tests, treatments, and vaccines. The WHO Director General adds, countries that have met the WHO's target of having 70% of its population vaccinated against COVID-19 are already reaping the benefits in their falling infection and death rates. Even as some high-income countries now roll out forced doses for their populations, one third of the world's population is yet to receive a single dose. Meanwhile, WHO's technical lead on COVID-19, Dr. Maria Van Kerkhove, says the virus continues to spread at alarming rates. At least 10, 11 million cases being reported each week, and we know that's an underestimate because surveillance has changed, testing has stopped or reduced significantly in a number of countries. And has, as countries uh, find their way through this, and find a way to responsibly manage COVID-19, um, uh, it's challenging. The Omicron COVID-19 variant continues to be the dominant variant circulating. Rakib Aparicio putting for ABS News. On this World Doctors Day, there is a call for a closer relationship between doctors and their patients. As physicians, we want to be your safe space and we want to build with you. We don't only want to see you when you have a crisis or when you're ill. So the wellness checks annually are very important. We want to see our children, not only when they have to get their vaccines, because after that, you know, we hardly see them. So children and adults, we want to see you when you're well. We want to help you to build, not only physically, but also emotionally, socially, and even spiritually in some circumstances. Dr. Siobhan, Siobhan Bell Jarvis, who is consultant pediatrician and head of the pediatrics department at the Celeste Bird Medical Center, also explains the immense sacrifices made by those in the field. Sometimes you, you go through phases of emotions. Sometimes you do feel guilty, especially if it is, you know, a significant occasion, a first birthday. You know, if I miss a second birthday party, okay, it kind of grows on you. Like a first birthday, you know, your first wedding anniversary, hello. It's, it's kind of difficult. Sometimes you're in the midst of church and you're called out for an emergency. But at the end of the day, you're helping to save a life and that makes a difference. The day is an annual observance aimed at appreciating physicians for their often life-saving work. And ongoing global developments, including the ongoing war in Eastern Europe, on the score the need to make transition from fossil fuels towards renewable energy sources. That's the view of the Chief Environment Officer, Ambassador Diane Blacklane. She was speaking with our news team on Tuesday during a ceremony to unveil a bi-directional bi charger at the Victory Center. Here's more in this report. And how people react when you're trying to transition away from fossil fuel. And why many people want to transition away from fossil fuel, not only because of climate change, but energy security an issue, conflict is an issue, and so we all want to transition. 
Ambassador Black claims as the use of this technology allows the government to decide the best fit for the country and provide the requisite training. This technology will help us to test to see how would that work and we can work with a company to develop a software that we would want to use at here in Antigua. So we will have our own system developing in the way going forward using the best technology that is available. The Chief Environment Officer insists the transition toward greener energy is crucial to building resilience. Antigua and Barbuda and other countries in the region are faced with the constant perils from powerful tropical cyclones, which could, more, could be more intense uh, because of global warming. Uh, she says this is especially important in light of the risk posed by powerful hurricanes. It's also an issue on the insurance market, so we are a high-risk country. So if we implement these technologies, we will reduce our risk. And yes, we can stop climate change from impacting us, but we can do something to recover a lot faster and get going, start earning again, start paying our bills again. This developing story on this hour, the Antigua and the Barbuda Chamber of Commerce is weighing in on the need for the country's fiber network infrastructure to be made available to all telecommunications providers. The Chamber met with several of its members earlier this month under the theme, Fiber for All, as we hear from Rakeem Aparicio. In its first face-to-face -face meeting since the COVID-19 pandemic, the Chamber of Commerce sat down with its members earlier this month to discuss the need to liberalize Antigua and Barbuda's fiber network infrastructure. The Chamber of Commerce formed the committee to analyze the country's telecommunications bill. The Chamber argues the present model in which the Antigua Public Utilities Authority is the only telecoms provider with access to fiber optic communication does not benefit the consumer. Without effective regulatory authorities and fair judicial systems, viable competition is unlikely to emerge. And that's what we have here. I mean, we have pseudo competition where, yeah, there are four operators who can provide internet, but only one of them can provide it with, fixed, with a fixed infrastructure. Antigua and Barbuda is presently governed by the Telecommunications Act of 1951. 1951. Mobile didn't exist, internet didn't exist, nothing that we're using today existed in 1951. And yet that is the legal framework that dictates how our telecoms works. Vice Chairman for the Chamber of Commerce, Julian Wilkins, provides a sub-regional comparison on the rollout of fiber networks. The Montserrat, the St. Kitts, uh, um, Dominica, St. Lucia, St. Vincent, OECS, that's how we should compare ourselves. And every one of those um, countries has at least two providers of fiber. The monopoly, he adds, is especially damaging given the increasing need for stronger and more reliable connectivity across the globe. Why are we uh, ranked 113th in the World Bank ease of doing business? Uh, part of that is to do with um, our infrastructure. Rakib Aparicio reporting for ABS News. Thanks so much, Rakib. Still to come in this newscast, more of the national stories we have been closely following for you this evening, including this one. Ship training to build its human resource capacity. Our reporter, Jamie J. Roche, was in the field to observe the exercise today. And later, Dr. Anika Hall James makes presentation on antimicrobial resistance to major conference. She is, by the way, pursuing a master's degree in public health in the Republic of Ireland. Coming up on the ABS Evening News, on air and online. Do stay on us, please. At Nagico, the things that matter to you matter to us. Like your boat when you're at sea and you get away from everything. Your home and the security of your daughter's things. And the car that you've had for too long. But after all these years, you just can't let go. At Nagico, we're about much more than just insurance. We're about the big things and the small things that mean everything. No frills, just great prices, only at Quartz. We don't just talk about it, we've got it. Shop with confidence and save big. Up to 50% off appliances, furniture, electronics, and so much more. Plus, pay with ready finance and get one month free. Only at Quartz. Bringing value. Home. Special conditions apply. Adventure awaits with Frontier Airlines. With Frontier... 
you can book your dream family trip from Antigua to Orlando, Florida. Make your booking by visiting flyfrontier.com or by giving us a call at 801-401-9000. Fly with Frontier. Low fares done right. Prior to the discovery of Antigonite, since 1981, we have offered unique jewelry in both silver and gold, as all of our clients deserve authentic, indigenous mementos, whether rings, brooches, bracelets, or earrings. The Gold Smithy, Redcliffe Key, St. John's, Antigua. Visit our website at www.goldsmithy.com or call us at 268 JanServe is committed to keeping Antigua and Barbuda safe with our mass sanitization program. Our methods are safe, effective, and efficient, and eliminate pathogens, mold, bacteria, and viruses, especially COVID-19. We are introducing the EPA-approved Victory Innovations Electrostatic Sprayer and Vital Oxide Disinfecting Sanitizer. Our solution is even safe to use around children. It's odorless, easy to use, and will disinfect areas and surfaces for up to five to seven days, depending on application. The electrostatic sprayer atomizes the molecules of the vital oxide to adhere itself to all surfaces. It's much more effective than wiping. We are committed to using the most advanced sanitization methods for the safety and health of everyone. For the cleanest clean, contact JanServe today. JanServe is a service mark of the Akima Group Incorporated. Hetty Dental Clinic offers you reasonable prices and the best dental job. Among the services provided by Hetty Dental Clinic are oral examinations, digital oral x-rays, whitening and fluoride treatment, digital panoramic x-rays, root canal treatment, wisdom tooth surgical extractions, cosmetic dentistry, crowns and bridges, dentures all kind full and partial, penis extractions, children's dentistry, dental implants, and much, much more. Open Monday to Friday, 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. And on Saturdays from 8.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. Telephone number 562-7878. See Hablo Espanol. Private parking is also available. For staying with us, time now for us to continue our national developments. The Antigua Public Utilities Authority is providing leadership training to build its human resource capacity. Staff members took to the outdoors Wednesday for practical sessions. Our Jamie J. Roche observed the sessions. <laughs> At first glance, you might think these men are soldiers in training, but that's not quite the case. These are APU way workers in a team building exercise at the Antigua and Barbuda Defense Force Base Camp Blizzard. APUA's training and development officer Heidi Skerritt says it's part of a leadership succession program the authority piloted with its water business unit last year. It starts with an eight week training program, which we give an overview of teaching our staff how to change to switch between peer to leader as well as different elements of the job that they would have to know as leaders. She says management is keen on rewarding workers for good performance. We started off with 12 uh, individuals and of the 12, just about half of them have already been promoted to a more senior position. Retired Lieutenant Colonel Ivor Walker's consultancy firm is working with APUA's management team on the training. I did a couple of workshops for them, for their middle managers. And uh, this is a practical part of it for their supervisors. The whole idea is to allow supervisors to learn how to manage their groups, their little teams and whatnot. Warrant Officer Lovell Grant engineers the course command tasks. This training is set out for 
building leadership and skills, supervisory skills, management skills, to understand how to work with the junior persons within the ranks, and also to build the capacity of camaraderie. In this session, the team figures out how to flip the so-called magic carpet while staying on top of it at all times. Other tasks include tying a knot while everyone keeps both hands on a rope and putting a drum to stand on an X while staying outside a border and not using their hands. A briefing follows each session and participants assess their performance and share takeaways. Jamie J. Roche, ABS News. One of Antigua and Barbuda's public officials is furthering her studies in the field of public health. A veterinary officer attached to the Agriculture Ministry, Dr. Anika Hall-James, is presently pursuing a Master's of Public Health at the University College, Dublin, in the Republic of Ireland. Hall-James also represented the University College at the 2022 Society of Veterinary Epidemiology and Preventative Medicine Conference. So, well, Hall and her colleagues presented on the antimicrobial resistance in E. coli in horses. Of course, she hopes to further explore implications of antimicro antimicrobial resistance, ANFD, in its impact on humans, animals, and the environment. When we come back from this break, we'll turn our attention to news overseas. One of the stories that we're tracking for you is this one from St. Lucia, which has signaled its intention to accede to the appellate jurisdiction of the Caribbean Court of Justice this year. It will become the fifth American country to do so. And later, concerns over possible gas supply disruption in Germany. We will tell you about the response from Berlin. These stories are all ahead for us right here on the ABS Evening News.